So today is lesson nine. We've kind of done a quick review. <laughs> Thanks, Raj. Uh, quick review of our midterm. So what we're going to do, we're going to couple, do a couple things today. We want to build out a shared header. So we've, we've linked to an external file before. Let's just, we may as well open up our site. Let's open up our PHP tunes. Site. And make sure you get connected to the VPN and that you start up our local ZAMP web, Apache web server. I'm just going to load the site in our browser. Okay, so we've got our home page. And then in here we have, for example, our list of artists, ability to add new artists. So we want to do a few things here. We did already create a database file that we could share. So for example, on our artists page, we use the require function to link in this external file. So that way we could share our DB file among our different pages. We didn't have to repeat our database connection over and over again. So a lot more efficient if we needed to change something, like we move the server address or reset our password. We just have to go to our database file and modify those things. Um, now, so we use the require function for this that says this page, hey, it needs the database connection, right? Because all this code, it would fail if we don't have an active connection. Now, So we have the require function, but we also have these other ones. We've got include, and then we have require once and include once. So they all work similarly, but I've listed the differences here. So if we use include, if the file we're trying to link to isn't found, we get a warning. But if we call require, it actually generates an error. Yes, thank you, Raj, I did. Thanks for checking. And then the difference between once and without, if we say include once, it means we can only link that file in once. Now, for all, all practical purposes, this is kind of irrelevant. We don't usually include or require the same file multiple times. But if we use once, it means you cannot require it or include it more than once per page. And so it's important to know the differences, the semantic differences, but the, for all practical purposes, we can use any one of these. But we're probably, we're generally going to use require, most common. So what we want to do now is we want to, we're going to do a couple things. We're going to build a shared header that's also got a navigation bar. So we're gonna grab a bootstrap nav bar, we're gonna put it into our pages, we're gonna share it, and then we're gonna customize some of the, the looks and design of it. And once we do that, after that, we're also gonna to start to implement some error handling. A few different types of error handling in our application. I'm gonna do one thing first before we start building our shared header, which is, and this was a comment came out of this morning's class. One of the students said, you know, can we organize these files a little bit? Cause the site's getting pretty big and unwieldy. So I think what I want to do is I'm going to create a separate directory for any shared files. So I know a few of you already did this in like your project. Um, I think Akeem, you had done this. So you had created an includes directory and you put any shared files in there. So I'd like to do that. I think that's a good strategy. So in my root, I'm going to make a new folder called includes. And I'm going to move 
I'm going to drag my db.php in here. Now this is going to break the paths, so I'm going to have to rewrite the paths to my db.php. Right, I've moved it in here, which means if I try and reload my artists, we now get this error, right? The link db.php, it's not in the same root folder anymore. It can't find it. So I'm going to rewrite in my artist.php, I'm going to rewrite this require. So my database file, it's no longer in the root folder, it's now inside the includes subfolder. So I'm going to use this for any files that are shared. So now when I refresh, my page should load. The AWS server has been very up and down today. So there may be times when it's offline. That's okay, we're going to be doing error handling, so having a database connection that's inconsistent. <laughs> Yeah, so it's offline. It'll be back in a couple of minutes. I'm not too worried about it. So now inside our includes folder, we want to make a header file. So this is going to be a global header that's shared by all the pages in our application. So I'm going to right click my includes directory. I'm going to make a new file, which I will call header.php. So it gives me this blank file. And then what I actually want to do is I want to remove the top part of my artists page. I want to move this stuff into the header. So our doc type, our HTML, and then the whole head section that includes Bootstrap, our custom CSS, and our JavaScript. So I'm going to take everything from the first doc type all the way down to and including the body tag. So I'm in my artist.php. I'm going to cut that. And I'm going to dump it into the header file. So I'm breaking up one full page into partials, into components. So now we'll use the require function so at the top of my artist page, I'll add on a set of PHP tags, and now we'll require So if I go back and refresh my artist page now, there shouldn't be any difference. It should look the same. We've just moved that header into a global file. So if we want to make changes to the header, we can just change this one file. We don't have to go and change the stuff on every page. Okay, so from the doc type down to and including the opening body. Oops. This should be in, my path is wrong. This should be includes. Thank you, Mike. I called my folder includes, so my path should be includes. And I'm going to want to do the same thing in our other pages. Okay, so our We're still offline. We'll come back online eventually. Let's go to our home page and do the same thing. It'll be a little easier on the home page because the home page isn't using the database. So I'm going to take out on my home page, I'm going to take out those first nine lines. Again, from the doc type down to the body. I'm going to delete them. Delete all those lines, and I will require
So I'm replacing everything up to and including that opening body tag with our header file. <laughs> so we, there's no, nothing visible in the header yet. But when I view the source, yes, Mike, we are going to deal with that in a minute. Glad you raised that. You're one step ahead of me. No, no, that's fine. I'm glad you're thinking about that. So it looks like a complete HTML page at runtime. But we do need to deal with the page titles. You're right, Mike. And notice our CSS, our font, all this works. But we've hard-coded the page title in the header, which makes no sense. This is bad for search engine optimization. We should have a descriptive title on every page. So here's what we do. I'm going to put in the name of the site, then I'll put in a PHP echo command and print out a variable called title. So we can set the page title on each page before we require the header. Now, if I make this change and go back to my browser, this will generate an error right now. So now I get this, right? Undefined variable title. So it's trying to display a page title here, but we haven't set that value. So we're echoing out a title variable inside of our HTML title tag. So if I go back to the home page, We'll just set the title variable here. So on the home page, if I set the, this title variable to welcome, now if I refresh my home page, that variable shows up here. So it's the name of the site, but then we have a search engine friendly name for the page. I want to do the same thing on the artist's page. Even though the page content is crashing right now, We're also going to want to set the page title here so that it says PHP tunes and then a pipe symbol and then we want it to say artists. So go back to the artist page and before we include the header, we'll provide a unique title for this page. That's appropriate for search engines. Okay, so now it says artists here. So there's nothing in our header yet. It's blank. Really, the only thing we actually see is the page title. So we want to go and put a navigation bar here with some links that's got the name of our site and links to the different pages.
I don't know if the database is ever going to load. At least it was up and down this morning. Now it looks like it's just down, period. Yours is loading. Okay, well, that's good. Maybe it'll come back. Not for me. Mine's still dead. So I put a link here on D2L. In the Lesson 9 folder, there's a link to Bootstrap 5 nav bars. If you click on that item, it'll take you to the Bootstrap docs. There's a whole bunch of different navigation bars here. The one I want is if you click over here on the right, there's a link that says nav. Highlighted it. So click here, and it gives us this light gray. We'll start with this, and then we're going to customize it. So give us a navigation bar that'll look like this. And here there's a copy button. So I'm just going to copy that, and then I want to dump this HTML into our header. So I'll go to the header.php, and inside the body, I'll just paste in the bootstrap nav bar. Okay, so this is going to give us a gray nav bar with links that say nav bar, home, features, pricing, and disabled. There, my database is finally back. So here I've got this gray nav bar. If I go back to the home page, so now we have a shared navigation bar. Okay, Jackson, good question. I'll show you. So let me just undo that. In Visual Studio Code, if you're using Visual Studio Code, notice I pasted it in. My, my tabbing and my nesting is a bit of a mess here. If you just hit Control A, select everything, there's an option in Microsoft Code Editors. If you right click, you can choose Format Document. And that automatically nests and indents our tags nicely. works in Microsoft Visual Studio as well. So if you're, which you're probably using in your C-sharp class, it's got that same feature. Okay, now this nav bar, obviously these, the links here don't make any sense and they don't actually work. They don't go anywhere yet. So we wanna change the text, enable the links, and then we can customize how this looks a little bit. So the first link we want to deal with is this one that says navbar. And this is typically where you put the name of the site or our logo, and this should link to the home page. So let's change this link first. Then we'll change these three, and we can probably get rid of this last one. So in our header, the first link is here. It's bigger. It's got this class of navbar brand. So this is used for the site name or site title. So I'm going to change the href here. This should go to index.php. And the text in the link will say PHP tunes. So the first link that's bigger, it's bolder font, we'll use that to go back to the home page. Yeah, if you wanted, and I'll actually show you where you could go and make a logo if you wanted, Dominic. I'll show you that in a bit. If I forget, remind me, Dominic. So now I click, and now we can get back to our home page. I'm going to change this link, the one that says home. So I'm going to take out this active. We don't need that. Current, we don't need that. So this is going to go to our artists.php, and our link will just say artists. So now we should be able to navigate between the home page and our list of artists. So I've changed line 18 and line 25. So I go to home, I can go to artists. So now we can start to navigate around. 
I'm going to change these two links and I'm going to get rid of the last link. Then we need to include the nav bar here. Our artist details page needs our header as well. And so our features link. Next week, we're going to start dealing with security and authentication. So next week, we're going to build both register.php as well as login.php. Do not want to miss the next two classes. There's no point in saying I can build a website if you don't know how to secure it. So we won't build these pages today. We'll build them next week. So those will just be broken links for now. This final link, this disabled, we don't need that. I was going to get rid of it. So there's four links in the nav bar. Link to the home page, then artist, register, and login. So change those. We'll want to update these three links as well. Again, we'll build the register and login pages next week. So now our nav bar looks like this. We'll also eventually move these, the register and login links over here. We'll do that next week as well. Okay, so we can go to artists. We get a 404 not found when I click register or login. That's fine for today. That's actually good because we're going to look at handling 404 errors later in today's class. And then we need to fix we also need our nav bar in the artist details. When we go to add or edit, we also want our header with our navigation here as well. So we're going to go to the artist details. We're going to take out the HTML at the top, replace it with our header, and also change the path to our database. Because notice my Drop down is not filling and the form dies because we've are we've moved that db.php file. Sorry about that. My daughter was just, yes, everything's fine. My daughter was leaving to go back to school. So uh, she's driving back to Waterloo for school. I just want to say goodbye to her. See her until the end of the semester. Okay. Um, I will put up on GitHub shortly, but may as well just finish the changes, but yes, I will upload. <laughs> Thank you, Paul.
Okay, so let's go to our artist details. So step one. So here we've got code before the body. So the first thing I'm going to do is going to take out, again, all the code above this first PHP tag. So the PHP tag can be the very first thing. Again, we'll set a page title to artist details. And we'll require our header. And in two places on this page, we're linking to the database file. So again, we've moved that. So I'm going to put in the folder includes slash. So where we're editing an artist and we're looking up in the database. I can take out the body tag. We don't need it because that's now coming from our header. So we don't need two opening body tags. We only need one. And again, inside our select, we've got one more require statement. So just like we did above, we need to add the path to include. I think, Jack, again, I'll reformat my code so it's nested nicely. I'll just hit Control A and I'll format the document. So Visual Studio Code will kind of re-nest my tags nicely for me. So now when we go to add or edit an artist, we should have our nav bar here as well. Okay, so my database connection is down again, but at least my nav bar is here. So I can go home, I can go to artists, which will die. So when we're on the artist details, we've now got our nav bar. We'll talk about the assignment next week. Okay, so now maybe I want to customize some of this stuff. So this gray nav bar is kind of blah. I'm going to go and open up my style sheet. So maybe what I want to do is use this dark green color that we put on our buttons. I want to use this color as my navigation bar. Make it a dark green with white. So we've got this as the primary. It's going to go into our header for a moment. So when we copied that bootstrap nav bar, it gives us nav bar light and BG light. So I'm going to change this. I'm going to take out the BG light class entirely. And I'm going to change our class from navbar light to navbar dark. So this is a built-in bootstrap class. This will make our navigation bar black with white text. But then I'm going to override the black background and use the, our green color.
I'm going to use navbar dark. Yeah, that's okay. So I'm going to add, just like our buttons are that dark green, I'm here I'm going to put in a comma and also define this same background color as navbar dash dark. So I put in comma. I'm going to save my style sheet. This should turn our navbar green. I did have to do a hard reload with control F5. So now my navigation bar is green with white links. But I had to hit control F5 in order for that CSS change to show up. Okay, so again, I've overridden Bootstrap's navbar dark class, which normally is black. We're applying the same color as with our primary buttons. So our buttons and our navigation bar, they're the same. The other thing I want to change is the color of my links. Instead of blue links, maybe I want them to be gray. So I'm going to override that as well. So rather than these being blue, I'm going to change the color of our anchors. And I'm going to copy this gray color from our alerts. So any links that appear in the content will be in gray, not in blue. Right, so my add a new artist link appears in gray. The Dominic, so you can make whatever other CSS changes you want. That's probably all I will do for now. If you want to make a logo, here's a site you can use. You can go to logomaker.com. I'm not going to do this right now, but you can create a new design. Just sort of show you how it works. So if you, let's say you wanted, I don't know, music, right? You could find an icon. And then you can set the colors, set the font. I don't know why this doesn't seem to be working. I've used this site in the past. I'll try a different browser. Let's see. So, you know, you can find an icon that you like. And you can add some text. You can change the color, right? So here's PHP tunes. And then you could use the colors from our style sheet. You can pick the color wheel. You can save this, and then you could add it to your nav bar. I'm probably going to skip over that. But if you're interested, you can play around with this. Add colors, change the font, and then you could embed the image in your nav bar instead if you wanted to. Okay. 
No, now it's loading for a minute. So my links are gray. Green. Now, one of the other things you can do with our site, um, keeping in mind some of the things, appreciate people who completed the survey on the midterm. There was some good feedback there. Um, one of the thing, couple things actually I wanted to speak to quickly. One is some people mentioned, you know, um, could I throw out some extra challenges? So I will try to do that each week. So one thing you can do, you can work on on your own, is you could try to create a shared footer that's a sticky footer. Okay, so create a shared footer for PHP tunes. It appears at the bottom of your site. You use Bootstrap to anchor it at the bottom of the window so that there is a shared footer that maybe had like a copyright statement. And it would appear down at the bottom of every page, regardless of how tall or how short the page is. So that's something you could try. Um, a number of people also asked about um, doing, you know, what else could you build? And I thought I listed here, there is on D2L an optional project. It's not for marks, but this is building an online time tracker for a company. So you could always build this for some additional practice. Um, somebody did provide, so I got lots of useful feedback, which I appreciate. A few people said sometimes the lessons are a bit fast and you don't have a working microphone. Please use the chat. If you need me to stop or go back, you need me to put up code again that I've already displayed and moved on, please let me know in the chat. Okay. Um, somebody else said having a question and answer session would be useful. We do have those, that's office hours. So if you just have questions, then you can book an appointment and I'm more than happy to sit down with you. Um, Don, I will, probably wouldn't really recommend putting that in your resume if you've really just followed it along. Uh, better to build things like what you're doing in this class where you're building something that's your own, I would recommend. So you can try, you can take a stab at building the sticky footer if you want to. Okay, it is uh, 12.50. I'm going to stop the recording. I will upload to Git now, so everything you need. If you missed anything, something isn't working, it will be on GitHub. Let's <clears throat> Take a 10 minute break and we'll come back at one o'clock and we will dive into PHP error handling.